This week on You Should Be Watching, we talk about the Sonic the Hedgehog sequel. We also talk about film and TV production resuming in the UK, and also HBO Max versus Netflix. Does HBO Max have what it takes to take on the reigning streaming service? Find out this week on You Should Be Watching. Welcome to a new episode of You Should Be Watching. We first want to start off this episode on a more serious note. Um, we are in the middle of an event called Play For All for GameSpot where we are raising money to help benefit both COVID-19 relief efforts and for Black Lives Matter. So we will have links in the description of this show for you to help donate. Um, but we want to make it clear that we do support both of these causes and we support the Black Lives Matter movement and everything that movement stands for and we condemn any kind of racism or discrimination. And we want to draw focus to the injustices that are happening and do what we can to help. So please consider sharing those links if you can't immediately donate or donating if you can. If you're not familiar with our event called Play For All, it's going on for six weeks total and it's a multi-week charity event and we're going to be raising money for those causes. But also um, we are going to have a lot of content around new gaming news, features, interviews, and live streams. We're gonna be joined by guests across the industry um, to help raise money and for a good cause and celebrate gaming. So please check that out on GameSpot.com and GameSpot on YouTube or Twitch. Um, and we'll be having a lot of really cool guests there. Troy Baker, Kind of Funny, No Clips Daniel Dwyer, What's Good Games, and more. For the full list, go check out GameSpot. So let's jump into this week's episode. Uh, we always talk about what we're watching currently, so let's change gears and talk about, uh, Greg, what are you watching right now? Well, when it's not the news, if you're looking to change gears to something else uh, for a moment, I would recommend The Great. I'm still watching that as we speak. Uh, I'm making my way through it slowly uh, because it's so damn lush. I'm loving it. Now, The Great's a miniseries loosely, and I mean very loosely, based on the life of Catherine the Great in Russia uh, during her time with uh, Russia's emperor and empress. So it's Russia's empress is, of course, played by Ella Fanning and Nicholas Holtz playing the emperor, and I am in love with both these characters so far in the show. Uh, the acting so far from everyone involved is great, and the dark humor is so on point. It's almost cringeworthy sometimes when it, they land the joke so well before they cut to the next scene. It's so damn good. Are these half-hour episodes or hour-long? No, they're about an hour long, 45 okay. minutes to an hour. How many episodes in the season? Ten. Ten, okay. and they're all available right now on Hulu. Nice. Good to know. Good to I know. was trying to figure out how many times you were going to call the great, great and you only said I, it once. Yeah, no, I was trying not to. Oh, man. Oh, disappointed, Greg. <laughs> nope. Oh, that's great. Um, it Matt, is great. Yeah, it is great. It's so great. <laughs> Matt, what nope. are you, <laughs> Matt, are you, what are you watching? Oh, get ready for some intellectual, just bright, mm, beautiful, wonderful stuff oh, for yeah. smart people. Oh, I'm yes. watching Boy. 90 Day Fiance on t <laughs> the Learning Channel. Oh, my goodness. It. I I still need to jump onto this train and and watch the show because all of my friends are watching it. It's Ugh. it's something. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's most of the show is um, usually about like fifty percent of the people that are traveling to other countries to meet their uh, the person they fell in love with online. It's an old dude in his fifties or sixties filled with delusion and just a, a naive, wonderfully Ugh. idiotic person, and you spend your whole time cringing just like. Yeah, oh, I watched man, like, I watched one episode. Couldn't I couldn't handle it, and I went to uh, marriage at first sight. But I will give ninety days. If, should I go back to ninety days? You should. Okay, because it, right. it starts off relatively seriously. We're in. I think we're in like season eight million at this point. <laughs> and by this, like it's so it's very scripted. Uh, not scripted, but Produ it's produced. The produce you can hear that you can pretty much hear the questions almost asked to them. Probably, yes. I'm assuming. Okay, Actually, uh, numerous times you can hear the producers asking questions. They just don't cut it anymore. <laughs> ah, cool. Wow, <laughs> it's wonderful. It is just. Uh, Do you have any favorite couples to watch from this show oh, so far? Man, well, there's this season. There's no couple I like mm -hmm. um, because they're all failures. Uh, spoiler alert. Whatever. Uh, it's trashy reality television. Don't get mad. I mean, uh, I who really... could have foreseen that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always like Darcy from Connecticut. She's a woman just looking for love and keeps falling in love with um, the worst dudes. But she falls like head over heels like day one. Like she meets a guy and she's just like, oh, my, we're going to get married next week, aren't we? And then it's a nightmare. 
She just wow. cries the rest of the season. Oh, um, man. I also... I like Erica from Australia because she reminds me of one of my friends. <laughs> I don't have much to add to that. <laughs> Erica from Australia. Cool. All yeah. right. We're gonna... Got it. What, what I really wanted to point out, though, I want to get away from 90 Day Fiance. I want to talk about summer game shows really quick. I love okay. crappy summer game shows. Holy Holy Season 2 is the best. Uh, it's extreme mini golf with Rob Regal as a commentator. I love it. People <laughs> fall into water a bunch. That's all you want from that. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's um ultimate tag on fox which is uh tag and uh i think the elevator pitch was like i'm really high let's make a show about tag <laughs> <laughs> so it's just people playing ultimate tag but it's hosted by uh, jj watt and his three brothers mm-hmm. uh this this is all black mirror weird. stuff to me i can't go that far because <laughs> yeah. i, I like uh, as far as I went was Mass Mass Singer. That's as far as I went, and even that's like uh, cringeworthy when it comes to just thinking of like this is this is Black Mirror come to life. And when I ever I see I saw commercials for the Rocks thing. JJ mm-hmm. Watts got one, like you just brought up. Uh, I think mm-hmm. everybody has one. I, I, is Gladiators back too? I don't if not, American Gladiators. Ultimate Tag is <laughs> Ultimate Tag is essentially American Gladiators, but weird or because okay. it's just tag. The rule is like I tag you. I guess I, the That's only one I, the only one I'm waiting on is uh, Legends of the Hidden Temple. They're bringing it back with adults, so I'll, I'll wait on that and see how that goes. <laughs> uh, but I want real darts, and I want this. <laughs> <laughs> it got too dark in my head, but I, I, I'm thinking now. I want like the beginning crawl, the opening from Indiana Jones. If they're going to do this with adults now, listen, the Temple Guards are still terrifying. <laughs> hmm. It can be a lot more terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Quibi. Oh, Quibi. Yeah, yes. it's on Quibi. You're Check not out... going to want to watch it. No, oh, probably oh. not. <laughs> Anyways, Chesty, what are you watching? <laughs> um, I, so I like going backwards and um, watching things that make me rem- remember a, a better earlier nostalgia. time in my life. Good nostalgia. Yeah. Like a warm blanket. Um, Give me that I'm, good old nostalgia. <laughs> exactly. So I'm I'm rewatching The OC because it's on HBO Max. Uh, so I am going back to uh, me Oof. being 19 and watching The OC, and it's 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 really that hold good. Up? Yeah, it's it's holds up. It actually does. Like there are only like a handful of jokes that like me and my roommate are watching it. So um, we're just like mm, maybe don't do that. But like pretty much it's it's pretty solid and it's. Um, Still mm. a really good story, and uh, the characters and the cast are, are great, and Sandy Cohen is still the best dad on TV. Well, one of them, but <laughs> love that guy. Oh, um, but yeah, the OC is fun, and I'm proud to tell you that season one is holding up quite nicely. Um, totally. um, as far as the other seasons, we'll find out, but that's that's where I'm at right now. Um, but also, you ma- mentioned Married at First Sight, Greg. I just started watching that for the first time. And, yeah. oh boy, wow. <laughs> you, well, you just wait. Um, it, it gets better or, or it, Does it, it? worse. worse. <laughs> um, I just finished that up too. Uh, like, There's no end, honestly. So I can't really say I finished it because I think they even had a trailer for the next season that hasn't even come out yet. So, And they're doing quarantine specials right now. It, it, it keeps going. It's endless. But the fun thing you're going to notice um, when these experts, uh, they're going to start changing depending <laughs> yeah. on what season uh, more divorces than not. So it depends on how many times someone gets divorced. You may see a different judge or expert or whatever they call them the very next mm-hmm. season. Hey, because, Greg. Just say. Oh, oh, is yep. Dr. Pepper still there? Yes. yes. So Dr. Okay. Pepper, I think <laughs> yes. I think she's the, she I, we can look this there. up for next time because I guarantee we're still going to be talking about it, but I have a feeling she's the executive producer and then she fires <laughs> yeah. the other ones. <laughs> what a name. Uh, but yeah, that's what I've been watching and it's, it's definitely an escape, um, but I, I wonder, like... Yeah, they were kind of bragging this season. Like, I don't. I think this is season nine or something. They were like, "Oh, well, we've we have like four or six couples that like made it, and we're like, out yeah, of, they're out uh, of how uh, many? Uh, out of how uh, many? So, <laughs> like, why I, are you I, bragging? I, there, it's a weird, it's a weird balance because mm-hmm. they want to continue the whole season with everyone, but it's getting closer. Where nowadays we're in a time period, uh, we're leaving one period where without TikTok and social media, that wasn't so prevalent as it is today. Where mm-hmm. now a lot more people are not staying on the show. They don't want anything to do with the show after a moment when they get on there and they realize, oh, this is actually a show and not really just about marriage. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't want to do that. They just thought they were going to find their significant other and then, you know, 
peace out. That's not how it works. When you have sign up for this show, the show, they have apparently not because uh, as you go further into seasons, you'll notice that and you'll keep saying that to yourself. Like, have they not watched this show? Do they right. not know what's up? No, because at the same time, these people, they're hired actors. They don't understand that part of the process. Mm-hmm. So it's a hard thing to watch. It's great for television if you're just sitting back and watching all this drama go unfold, but these are real people and uh, something about the production here, it's a little weird because it, it seems like they're trying to find people who don't know this so they can get something out of that, some of this on camera. Oh, well, it, it, it just watch, it unfolds. It is messy, but uh, somehow, some way, it keeps going because, you know, we're all looking for love, so if they say, hey, we can match up with someone, one thing, You're going to be on camera and you're going to go through the entire thing from beginning to end, no matter if you say you want a divorce. There will be some couples when you're watching this that say, I want a divorce like a weekend during the honeymoon, but they're still going to stick around the show because they signed a contract. So they have to find a way to keep them going on the show. They even have uh, someone at some point in a uh, a date with another person. (laughs) Just this. Yeah, it's it's crazy. All right. I will keep watching then. Yep. All right, on to the next section, which is this just in, and we're going to talk about some of the big entertainment stories in the past week. And the first one is that Sonic the Hedgehog, the movie, is getting a sequel. So Paramount is developing a sequel to this year's live-action Sonic film, and both the director, Jeff Fowler, and writers Pat Casey and Josh Miller are set to return. Uh, we're not sure about the cast yet, James Marsden, Ben Schwartz, Jim Carrey. Uh, if they're reprising their roles, that hasn't been confirmed as of yet. But any guy, any of you guys have thoughts on Sonic getting a sequel? Well, Chastity, as you know, I'm the head of entertainment news at GameSpot, <laughs> and I have very big ideas. No opinions, <laughs> oh, though, no. because I only state facts. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I'll see it if it comes out. I, I'm, I have Sonic here. He's here on my desk, and I'm very excited. I'm very excited that he's getting a sequel. Um, I And there was a tease at the end, if you haven't seen it, uh, there's a beloved character at the end in the post credits. Uh, so I assume that character will be a main character in the sequel, so I'm very excited about that. Um, and I really do hope that Jim Carrey comes back. He was really hamming it up and like he kind of basically just flipped on a switch and be- became 90s Jim Carrey again. Um, Not and Jim really, Carrey, he rarely does yeah. sequels. He rarely <laughs> goes true. back for that second check, no matter what. That's he, true. Even Honestly. if it's Ace Ventura 2. Doesn't, yeah, uh, hey, that was <laughs> when the... When nature and calls. And that's why he doesn't, he doesn't do it anymore. He, they have to drag him back out for Dumb and Dumber too uh he wouldn't do it he does not do sequels yeah so maybe he won't but maybe he'll do it we'll see ben schwartz will do it and james marsden will probably do it too if they are calling him back and otherwise uh, if they're like going with a different storyline they might not even need uh james marsden anymore so we'll see how that goes but i'm excited i thought who do you pick for the villain though if like jim carrey doesn't come back because like sonic's villains are good question they would make sonic they would just recast (laughs) They, they, would they can't recast. recast. They can't recast. Yeah. That wouldn't work. Oh, that would be so weird. So I hope Jim Carrey comes back. I, if he had fun during the first one, I feel like he might. Oh I think boy. there's a really good chance that he'll come back. All right, on to the next story. Uh, J.K. Simmons is teasing the future of his character in the MCU. So if this might be light spoilers, but we uh, we saw him at the end of the latest Spider-Man um, Far From Home. So when he was asked by EW if we can expect to see him again, uh, he said, I don't know if I would use the word expect. Uh, he explained that he is signed on to do sequels, but the studio isn't obligated to use him in subsequent films. So I would like to see uh, JJ, J, 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 J come back. What do you guys think? And what other characters would you like to see return? I wonder if Spider-Man. They- I wonder if they just had him in like a room on a green screen and they had him just mm-hmm. perform a bunch of lines and sign some contracts <laughs> and say, we may Probably. use this in another movie down the line. Uh, and that's mm-hmm. it. And then that's the end of it. So they, maybe that's why he's like, I don't know, maybe they'll use me in the future. Who knows? But I hope they bring him back. I, I hope he's a in every single Spider-Man film going forward. Uh, I, the same way I wish that uh, we'll talk about i know it's not possible um unless there's a lot of things that happen here william defoe should return in some way somehow to this oh, that'd show. Be so great i want a crazy <laughs> no. green goblin back i know he's dead so they <laughs> he's dead dead in this uh, franchise so who knows how they'll bring him back but i would love to see a crazy william defoe return to the mcu somehow some way i well i've been watching there HBO's are alternate Oz. universes uh. <laughs> 
You've been watching Oz? I've been watching Oz again for like, the, this is probably the 800th time. And oh so my. I'm really into J.K. Simmons right now. Um, he should return. It, it's about time the Marvel Cinematic Universe has a person, an, a character with the same balding pattern as myself. I really feel represented now. <laughs> Just <laughs> J.K. Simmons is great. <laughs> Finally, a bald hero. <laughs> the hero we need. <laughs> we don't need a bald hero. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Um, and then on to the last news story in our list. Uh, the UK is giving the green light for film and TV production to resume. So the United Kingdom is one of the first countries to allow filming to start again with strict guidelines, of course. So... Uh, these have officially been given the go-ahead to resume as reported by The Guardian, and they would have to abide by COVID-related restrictions. So according to a leaked draft of the guidelines, measures could include mandatory coronavirus training for the crew, temperature checks, quarantine periods for international ca- cast and crew. Um, and so some of the things that were being produced in the UK uh, include some big name stuff like The Batman, um, the second season of Netflix's The Witcher, uh, Warner Brothers has a third Fantastic Beast movie in the works, um, Disney's working on the live action Little Mermaid in the UK. Uh, none of these have been um, publicly announced as resuming, but uh, what do you guys think? Do you think it's too soon or what do you think they should do? Well, it was international, you said, so uh, mm-hmm. I, I guess it's it, it all depends. But I know here in America, there's still uh, unions. There's a holdup right now, last time I checked, uh, with uh, health and safety for actually you know, implementing these rules to just tell people to go back. So L.A. right now, they're not on board whatsoever with any plan to come back just yet. It looks like it's going to be another month or two, but it looks like they're slowly beginning the process to go back out there. But right now, last time I checked, unions are having a little bit of a, an issue issue uh, with uh, health and safety concerns when it comes to having their crews go back out there and start shooting because again you're you got to think about all the anyone else out there the grips who and the assistant you know producers out there who are running in the cars going back and forth so they have to figure all it's a logistics nightmare still at the moment that's a really good point uh yeah so Good luck to them, but I, I think, yeah, as long as they are very strict about these things, um, it depends on the production, right? It depends on what they're making. Um, but yeah, these but these bigger um, projects that I mentioned, maybe not <laughs> the first things that should start. Um, no! Like, because of what you mentioned. I don't know. <laughs> as I, I don't want to get too into depth with this. As someone whose family had the coronavirus, hold off! For just stop, every it sucks. Just hold off, please. Just that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> yes, yeah. and yeah. that seems to be know. the case. Yeah, and when it comes to Hollywood, that seems to be the case too. There, uh, please hold off. Just wait. This uh, again, Corona's not going anywhere. It, it's it, it's yeah. not. It's waiting outside with a cup of tea, waiting on production crews. So you got to have your health and safety concerns met before you do any of this. Yeah, it it, it ain't a cold. Um, it put my wife out for a month like i was out for a couple weeks i don't take sick days from work and i was off of work so i tried to st- work <laughs> like an idiot it sucks and we had a light case so no stay, home. Okay. stay safe yeah. everybody <laughs> stay safe all right the next section is you should be watching and this week the topic is hbo max versus netflix so hbo max just dropped and it's the biggest launch of a streaming service this year so far and netflix is still the reigning king so we're going to compare the two uh, based on what we've seen so far so matt you reviewed hbo max for GameSpot last week what did you think overall um First of all, it's a it's a Wii U situation where there's a new product out, but they named it so poorly that everyone's confused. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm. HBO Max has, I love it. I'm watching it every day, all day right now, but it has some huge, huge issues. Primarily, uh, no Amazon Fire support uh, yeah. and no Roku support. One. That's 33% of the market share for streaming platforms. Uh also, there was an event, a, uh, a press event back in, I think this was January, it's hard to remember now, uh, maybe October of last year, who knows, everything is, time doesn't exist. Yeah, time's Where okay. They promoted the uh, the HBO, like, Max Hubs, like, here's, you know, TNT will have a section, True TV, HBO, yada, 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 for all mm-hmm. the properties. Um, it's buried on the bottom of the page, uh, there's no video curation, 
Uh, and there's really nothing there. I think there's a lot there. It's just you have to dig, and that's an issue. I shouldn't have to dig through a brand new service to find quality content. And there are so many good movies and TV shows there. But again, I shouldn't have to dig. That's a really good point. They should yeah. have it kind of like the way that Disney Plus had those buttons right up top, right when you open the app. They right? do, it's, but um, uh, with a different brand. They they do have that, but it's uh, not great because of course mm. they're going to be promoting their original series first. I'm not into their yeah. original series except for almost almost talk show is the best Elmo. thing ever. I love it's almost so talk good. show. <laughs> it's so delightful. I I think they just. It's not like a failed launch in the sense that I feel like Apple TV Plus was a failed launch or Quibi was a failed launch, mm -hmm. but it's darn near close. The only thing, wow. the only reason that it's going to survive is that HBO's programming, which is the you know, forefront of the service, is so strong, you know, mm -hmm. and from there, people will be branching out. Like, I'm watching the Chris Gethard show from season three on True TV on HBO Max, like, all day today, just to kind of keep my spirits up, like... Fresh Prince I've been watching with my kid all week because mm -hmm. Fresh Prince. Um, but again, you have to dig to find like kind of that feel good stuff or anything that they're not promoting. It's just a pain to find stuff. I think HBO Max in the end will be a, you know, a top three performer, but they have so a long seeing, road to go. So you're saying the interface is really the hiccup here and not really, or, or is it a bit of both? There, yeah, there's a lot of Content and interface. Oh, God. <laughs> the U.S. not, the U.S. I, not I, too I, bad. I, I, yeah, the interface looks nice. Um, yes. It's a lot. It's when we're talking yeah. about interfaces, there's it's night and day compared to Hulu. If you're still on the old Hulu interface at the moment, I know they updated it, but I haven't seen it yet on mine. I'm on an Apple TV um, and Hulu still the reigning king for the worst interface alive. But um, <laughs> with that said, it, it, uh, HBO wasn't any better when you're trying to scroll and find anything on here. I've noticed that the only thing I've added to my queue so far has just been old classic Hollywood movies at the moment to keep that in there just so I don't get confused and can't find it later on. Um, but with that said, I'm still there's still a lot of things missing that they announced that would be on there day one. I understand uh, this is it's hard to bring that up. You, you got to give one, them like a little, it's a little violin. Back. Yeah, you got mm -hmm. a little violin right now because we're dealing with a, a pandemic. So I'm not going to go into any more details in that crap because it's not worth it. Uh, yeah. Just saying that it, give it time. Uh, it's going to get better as of right now. Yeah, I wouldn't I would not recommend someone to go out and spend 15 bucks on this. Just right. Yet. It's $15. Yeah, oh, so I that's see. Like, I would. Uh oh, oh, because, I because would not. No, you're getting HBO. I mean, like the, you're getting you're getting the HBO content, which is already in itself for HBO Go and H or HBO Now and through cable providers. That's already 15 bucks a month. So yes. you're getting you're paying 15 bucks a month for all of that. And then you're getting a ton of movies, a ton of TV shows. And yeah, it's a pain in the butt to find stuff. But it's it's cheaper than Netflix. Well, Netflix premium, I should say. Right. Netflix premium. But, but there's no 4K streaming yet, so HBO yeah, Max. I think, I think you made yeah. a really good point that like there's a huge count against it that we if you had HBO through Amazon Prime, like you're kind of screwed. screwed. And I have an Amazon Fire yeah. TV bot right behind me Same. that I can't watch it on um, through an app, which sucks. Um, I have to turn on my, my PS4 now, in order to use HBO this Max. This will which, change soon. Yeah, that will I'm just, change I'm very quickly. Lazy. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too lazy. I hate turning on my PS4 to watch HBO. Um, but yeah, that's that's a huge count against it. But, but how I many, still enjoy using it. How many streaming services, you know, I've been covering launches of streaming services since I've been on GameSpot like five years. Um, yeah, Disney Plus had an awful launch. No one could get on it. Yeah. <laughs> Quibbies was laughable. Uh <laughs> Apple What's team? Quibbly? Uh, it's a quick bite. <laughs> I know. It, it's, <laughs> it's that streaming service that I had to write it out, and I was trying to find nice things to say, and it was very hard. <laughs> oh, I know. Jeffrey yeah. Katzenberg's new, uh, uh, possibly final, uh, failed project. But yes. Yeah, but every streaming service that I've signed up for on day one, WWE Network, Apple TV+, Plus, they've all had very, very rough launches. I think mm -hmm. what sets HBO Plus, HBO Plus, ugh, these names are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> what sets HBO Max apart from the rest of them is that their their launch was okay, aside from missing out on Roku and Amazon. The problem mm -hmm. is, uh, the mar a lot of them, it's the marketing, like how they're marketing it to people. Like, John Oliver it's confusing. on- Yeah, John Oliver on Last Week Tonight this week said, like, what is HBO Max? I work for HBO. I have HBO. I don't even know. Like, it's a joke, <laughs> but also it's a thousand percent true. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's, hey, what's our biggest brand name? HBO. Okay, we can't go with AT&T, Max. Let's do HBO. Cool. Got it. And then that was it. Everyone left the room. (laughs) That was how it went. What would have been Warner? It should have been Warner Brothers Streaming or Warner Brothers Plus or Warner Brothers something because Warner's the the big thing there. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. They just wanted to attach it to HBO's name. Yeah, not um, a great start, I, but it'll be I, fine. Kind of get, yeah. It, I think it'll it will do well. So, yeah. with that in mind, so the reigning and most popular service is still Netflix. So, why do you think it's the most popular, and what are they doing right? It's garbage. <laughs> They give you everything. They don't care what it is. They're like, what do you, what do you got? Oh, uh, okay, I got one about a parrot, uh, a paraplegic parrot um, who fights crime at night uh, against vampires. You got Into it. Into it. <laughs> they, Anything. They, it doesn't matter. It's they. What they do well, and, and it, this is why it hits for a lot of people, I believe, is they throw a lot of darts at the wall. And mm-hmm. on occasion, they catch. If you, I'm writing up. You know, every week I'm writing up what's hit, coming to Netflix. And every week it's a list of original programming I'll never watch and never hear of. However, you know, twice a month, something huge connects with the audience. That's what they're banking on. Yeah, it's a gamble. They are just like making everything, anything and everything and yeah. making as much of it as they can um, and just seeing what sticks. HBO yeah. Max, they have a lot of shows in production right now, more than usual when it comes to HBO pro- programming in general, because they're, uh, I, I feel like that's the one thing I'm scared about with HBO, because the this company used to be, uh, again, they were the Neiman Marcus of the streaming wars at the beginning. Now, I feel like they're just throwing everything to the wall, just like Netflix, to catch up and hope that something catches fire. It will, um, but I hope it doesn't just drag down the HBO name with it when they do this. We'll see. I don't th- I don't think so. I mean, if you look at the history of HBO's original programming, just in general... It's been solid. The, well, it's, solid. It's not all solid. I think there's a lot of garbage in there, but... The, it <laughs> trickles out. It tr- yeah, <laughs> I mean... So, yeah, they find a way to make sure it just goes away. I, I can think of a few right now that... I I can remember that just haven't made it. I even thought high maintenance wouldn't make it at the time, but no, it's again, no. that's like the low bar for them and it still continues to be great. So I don't know. Netflix is bad is a lot worse than what I think HBL's bad could be. We'll see. Net- <laughs> Netflix is just the, the reason it's so successful at this point is because it's, it was the really the first streaming service mm-hmm. and uh, it has cheap. name recognition. Yep. I mean, yep. that's it's the, it's the McDonald's at this point of streaming services. Everybody yeah. knows what Netflix everyone, is. You gotta have everyone it. has it. Yeah. yeah, everyone kind of already has it, and they don't want to get rid of it because they keep. We keep getting stuff from them. Yeah. Um, like once in a while, there will be something we really like, and usually it's like once a month or once every other month, right? Um, that where it's like, oh, I liked that. I'll keep watching Netflix. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, everybody yeah, should just... have Hulu. Hulu is the best by <laughs> far. Do you think yeah, so? Yes. Do you think Hulu is the best? Content Hulu's wise, the best. it's the best. What level? What level tier of Hulu? That's the problem, right? I oh, have. I'm no ads. Oh. Mm, oh. Yeah, the no ads version of Hulu is is where it's at for sure. I have ads on mine, and I don't really enjoy it. Seems it seems awful. Um, yeah, it's a bad time. <laughs> but how much is it for the no ads version? I think I'm paying fifteen or sixteen a month. But mm. I did the ad version for a little while, and no ads was worth it to me. It it does. You'll seem pull your it. hair out with ads. Yeah. You'll be bald like me. <laughs> There's a reason they have another tier with no ads. That's all I'll say. <laughs> yeah. That's true. So do you think that HBO Max has what it takes to be a top contender against Netflix? Yep. Easily. It just It's going to take yeah. a couple years. What are your hopes for it? And what do you think needs to be added in the future? They need the hubs to be front mm-hmm. and f- like at the front of the page. Like I want to be able to select what channels I'm watching for, whether it's Turner Classic Movies, True TV, whatever Warner Media has. There. I want to be able to choose from those um, mm-hmm. instead of trying to yeah. just blindly search. Um, Because I think they have Bloomhouse stuff, too, if I'm correct. I can't remember. Oh, I didn't even notice. I didn't see any. I I wouldn't be shocked if they, at some point, they should. They're supposed to. I think they're supposed to. I think I saw some in in some commercials. But even just give me, like, an anime section. I know Studio Ghibli, Ghibli Ghibli, I don't know, apologies, Mm -hmm. uh, and Crunchyroll are on there. um, Mm -hmm. But just give me a section of just anime. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. I agree. Uh, though I do like having all of Studio Ghibli in one place, I feel like yeah. it could be a button under anime. Um, but yeah, that's just an organizational thing. But I'm really happy to have all those movies there. I definitely watched um, a couple over the weekend. What'd you watch? Um, I watched uh, Whisper of the Heart because I'd never seen it before. I've never seen lovely. that either. 
Yeah, yeah. I wanted to start with some that I hadn't oh. seen uh, or that are just were hard to obtain um, otherwise. So I, yeah, I'd never seen it. So I liked it. It was good. I promised and to watch Kiki this weekend. Yeah, yeah. I promise. If not, we'll sooner. talk about it next week when you yes. watch it or whenever you do watch it. But yeah, it, it's it's good. It's it's like I said earlier. It's a, like a warm blanket. I just something I can put on that I know will make me feel good, which I kind of need right now. So Studio yeah. Ghibli definitely hits that for me. All right, so last question. Uh, Matt, what changes would you like to see made to Netflix? Because since we talked about HBO Max, uh, what would Netflix have to change for you? I, I think the the UI for Netflix is a little convoluted. You have, you know, what's trending, what's popular, uh, and then the top 10, which are, these are three things, essentially. And That's confusing. It's saying the same thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. They tend to put their original content first and foremost, which I understand. But a lot of people, like myself, when I first got on the Netflix, you're getting it for secondary material, like uh, secondary movies and television. What are you going to say, Greg? No, that's the thing that's really, well, excuse me, uh, pissing off Hollywood producers, which is why they don't like Netflix in the first place. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's a juggling act to go like, all right, what do we put at the front page? What's the splash page here? Because, again, if it's Netflix originals, that's that's going to hurt them uh, when it comes to trying to, you know, for their content creators to go out and find people in Hollywood to come work for them. So they have to they're, they're finding this juggling act because you've seen things, too, where it's like a Netflix project, but they take away the director and writer's name sometimes and just put Netflix original on there for ads. Um, so we're still in this war between the two where they're trying to figure out, like, does Hollywood accept Netflix at all? So that's why you're seeing this page with so much stuff on there and they don't want it to be anything that's really really like you know highlighting one thing that's so much of a netflix original when they want it to be just almost anything um and netflix doesn't want to really you know help out their competitors that much as well so they they're 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 paying rent to stay on their site but at the same time it's weird it's a weird juggling act so i don't know what they can do to really change their interface to for everyone to be happy with it someone's going to be upset yeah i mean (laughs) the the main one of the other major issues i have with with Netflix and it's a fine service on its own. I think it's gone down in hill in quality the past couple of years is that you're getting the same like three recommendations for everything. And Netflix has a very deep catalog. It's just, you know, what if I want to watch a sci-fi movie? Well, I'm getting the same three horror movies in the sci-fi section over and over and over again. I feel like, mm-hmm. um, there, the, the, the search is just not as intuitive as I would like. I, I do like the fact though, that if I am searching something through Netflix, like I was searching, I don't know, I, example One Piece, I'm not sure if One Piece is on there, but I was trying to watch it somewhere. I think I was trying to watch it on Hulu, but I was searching mm-hmm. through Netflix. And it recommended shows that were a lot like it, which like, that's great. That's one thing that Netflix has over mm-hmm. most of its competitors. The algorithm works sometimes. Yeah. yeah. But the but the problem is, and they also, they keep changing the imagery on like the posters for the movie in there. And oh, that's yeah. just, the al- that's, that's another thing. They're like, oh, okay, <laughs> oh, if you swipe past that a little too fast, they got to switch it out. They're yeah, like, okay, like sometimes but... it's like, it's a woman in a bikini. I'm like, this is a, a documentary about a true crime killing. Why is that a woman in a bikini? <laughs> Please get remember. No. I remember when we all did the, um, we noticed that the Avenger thumbs were different. Yes. Uh, and I got, and shocking enough, when I went back to check mine, it was Black Panther. Shocking. Oh my so goodness. I, 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 <laughs> so I wonder how that works. Netflix. Um, yeah, someone get on top of this. But at the same time, again, it's the algorithm. It's yeah. just running through. And it, it yeah. says, okay, you don't like this? Let's give them this. Um, so whatever their numbers are telling them, it's telling them, hey, stick to what's working. And so they're yeah. staying to what we're looking at right now for now at least until it says otherwise yeah i agree the discover discovery needs to be better um i mm-hmm. would like to just like go th- to a category and there just be like a random button i just want to like hit random and just play something because I, I sometimes i just can't decide and i'm just looking through all the titles and i pick nothing and i curated go back content. to watching the office again for so, me curated content yeah same thing because yeah. it's always office it's like the office or now will be fresh prints or whatever fresh prints, off, yeah, yeah. Um, now it's fresh prints with hbo max yep <laughs> but curated content it really helps so if they can get actual humans to do this sometimes it would really help anything i love it for criterion collection has it um uh, even uh, tmc has it too uh, where you can actually human beings give you playlists uh, to watch whatever you want it's awesome spotify like playlists would be really cool or even just like people on staff that are making those right so like spotify mm-hmm. does a really great job of making the throwback thursday playlist and it's always like 
stuff that I really love listening to but forgot existed. If I had that same thing for Netflix, that would be really cool. And Shudder does all that. I mean, <sighs> yep. Wow. Unfortunately, Shudder's it's only horror favorites. movies. So if you're not into horror movies, mm-hmm. but the, the the curation system on Shudder is just beautiful. It's so well done. Yeah. All right, Matt, so you also have a podcast called Wrestle Buddies. We just had Chris on a couple weeks ago who told us about it, but if they missed that episode, tell us about Wrestle Buddies. I'm going to tell you about Wrestle Buddies a lot louder than Chris. Uh, <laughs> Chris and I became friends. Um, well, we worked together at GameSpot, but we became like real life, like actual like best friends because of our love of wrestling, uh, other things as well. Uh, and we wanted to just do a show where it's us taking our Slack conversations and making them into a podcast. <laughs> and most of the time we're just talking about goofy stuff. Um, it's a goofy show. It's kind of comedy-ish. Uh, this upcoming week... I, I, I say it's this. I say it's comedy. But this upcoming week I talk about dealing with the coronavirus. Oh, <laughs> it's man. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> what other things have you talked about? Uh, we talked with Greg Thomas from uh, GameSpot Universe. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. We talk about, like, yeah, RoboCop dude, being some... a wrestler. <laughs> We just get into the weird things of in wrestling. We, we're not a recap show. We're just a couple couple goofballs talking about RoboCop and Kiss Demons and Chucky from the Child's Play movies being in wrestling and why that exists. And occasionally God, we interview wrestlers. <laughs> yeah, it did. Wow. Challenging Scott Steiner to a match at Raw. Uh, oh my goodness. A doll challenged a man to a fight. Wow. You gotta we'll love talk it. about it. You gotta love it. <laughs> All right, Greg, and you are working on some AHS Hotel, is that right? Yes, we are. We're getting started with AHS Hotel just in time for Chromatica. Uh, yeah, I know. The drop, so... Uh, Album of the I, year I, already. Can't believe yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I've listened uh, we'll to see. it every single day this past weekend. Um, but yeah, it, it's a great album. Go listen to it on Spotify by Lady Gaga. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> If you have any comments or questions about this episode or want to reach out to us via email, you can do that at ysbw at gamespot.com. That's ysbw at gamespot.com. You can also listen to this very podcast on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or Stitcher. Or if you're already listening, what a silly thing for me to say, go watch it on YouTube, youtube.com slash gamespotuniverse. Or follow us on Twitter. I'm at chastity underscore V. Greg? I'm at Greg Spot Thomas. And Matt? I'm uh, at I'm Matt Elfring. I am M A T E L F R I N G. Boom. Very nice. And be <laughs> sure to check out GameSpot's Play for All event going on through mid July. And we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye. Bye bye.